A warm welcome to your Barbados Today Weekly News Update for Thursday, December 2nd. As more countries detect the presence of the Omicron COVID-19 variant, authorities here are on alert but have decided against closing Barbados's borders. Speaking at a COVID-19 press conference today, Chief Medical Officer, the Most Honorable Dr. Kenneth George, says the border closures are not grounded in good public health science. The issue that we face is to make decisions regarding closure of borders or restriction of travel. And as I have indicated, that measure is not necessarily based in public health science. The closure of the borders is a temporary measure. Let us look back and see what took place with the Delta variant. And we are here today. What we need to do is have enhanced surveillance, making sure that the countries that have been identified as countries that have potential risks are the countries that we concentrate on. The EOC, in, his, in its judgment, uses formula to decide based on the levels of variance within a particular population as to the, um, the, the direction we go. The chief medical officer today noted that there has been some improvements in the country's efforts to tackle COVID-19, but he remains concerned about the high number of unvaccinated people who are dying as a result of the virus. He revealed that 90% of the deaths recorded are people who aren't vaccinated. To date, persons who have died, 90% of those individuals have been unvaccinated and 10% have been vaccinated. We have never told the public that the vaccinated population will not die. And that just doesn't make any sense. But if you were a betting man, I would prefer to be on the side of the 90%. Because the, I would be prefer to be on the side, sorry, of the 10% of persons who have been vaccinated because your likelihood of poor outcomes are very strong. The Most Honorable Dr. George also addressed concerns from some medical professionals that not enough testing is being done. With decreasing numbers, there will be decreasing contacts. If your numbers are getting a bit better, the number of contacts will decrease and therefore we still practice contact tracing in Barbados. It has changed a bit, yes, but we still do. So therefore if an office was exposed, the close contacts of that office are tested. Some of them may be tested twice, some of them may be tested on a single occasion based on their exposure. The other reason why um, the numbers have gone down is Ronald alluded to that, that we have to continue as a ministry to encourage the average man in the street to understand that testing, I've been tested two or three or four times, is not an onerous procedure but it gives information on your status. As the holiday season kicks into full swing, the head of the COVID-19 monitoring unit, Ronald Chapman, is warning Barbadians that under the current directive, gatherings during the Christmas period are not allowed. He warns citizens that now is not the time to drop their guard. We're not saying that you, you are unable to meet with people and so on, but just be cautious in your in, in the actions that we take with reference to, to meeting, in reference to our interactions with persons. Um, there are a number of things that we, we want to continue to stress where the protocols are concerned. I know that um, 
we have seen some persons who they will have seen some of the numbers falling and people start to take it to mean no it's a free for all we can do what we want we've we in the covid unit have been seeing a number of um, gatherings and we've been taking the necessary um, approaches to dealing with those gatherings but we're asking persons at this point in time those things are still yet not allowed we now to the latest covid 19 update two more barbadians have succumbed to the virus a 61-year-old man who was unvaccinated passed away at the Harrison Point Isolation Facility today. And on Wednesday, a 51-year-old woman died at the Harrison Point Isolation Facility, and she was vaccinated. The death toll now stands at 234. There's regional and international news after this short break. I'll admit, when the COVID-19 vaccines were first introduced, I was a bit skeptical. I wondered, how did they create these vaccines so quickly? I heard so many theories and was suffocated by all the noise. But once I did my own research and began speaking to my friends in the field, I got the facts and decided to take the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. I am now proud to say that I'm fully vaccinated. I am one who believes in choice, but I also know that with each choice comes consequences. COVID-19 vaccines have been proven to provide a layer of protection against COVID-19. We have been in this situation for far too long now. It is time to get our lives back. We still need to social distance, wash our hands and mask up, but having an extra layer of protection with the COVID-19 vaccines, we should feel more happy that we're protecting ourselves, our family and friends, our colleagues and our clients. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. Regional news now. Guyana is urging the CARICOM community CARICOM to implement decisions aimed at deepening the regional integration movement. Addressing the President's Dinner and Award Ceremony of the Trinidad and Tobago Manufacturing Association, President Efran Ali said the region must collaborate and create new business prospects, not only for Guyana and Trinidad and Tobago, but for CARICOM as a whole. We get more in this report from Newsroom, Diana. President Irfan Ali believes that there are too many imposed barriers that are affecting regional trade, and he believes that it's time for those barriers to be withdrawn. In a virtual address to the Trinidad and Tobago Manufacturers Association President's Dinner last evening, President Ali said CARICOM leaders and other regional stakeholders need to see their economic operating space as one. He noted that for many CARICOM countries, imports continue to outweigh exports, and that needs to change. I will share a document maybe later with the association that deals extensively with the barriers to trade country by country. And I hope that in, in sharing this, you will use your, your association to partner with associations across CARICOM in raising your voices, in joining our collective effort in the removal of these barriers. On the international front, Moderna could have a COVID-19 booster shot targeting the new variant and is ready for U.S. authorization as soon as March, the company president said on Wednesday. We get more in this report from Reuters TV. The same day the first confirmed U.S. case of the Omicron coronavirus variant surfaced in California, Moderna said it could have a booster targeting the new COVID-19 variant as soon as March. Moderna President Stephen Hode says his company's already working on that booster program. He told Reuters Wednesday he believes booster shots carrying genes specifically targeting mutations in the variant would be the fastest way to address any anticipated reductions in vaccine efficacy it may cause. He said Moderna is also working on a multivalent vaccine that would include up to four different variants, including Omicron, a process that could take several more months. In Washington this week, the U.S.'s top infectious disease official, Dr. Anthony Fauci, said it could take two weeks or more to find out how easily the variant spreads from person to person and whether it can bypass the protections provided by vaccines. The molecular profile of the kinds of mutations that you see would suggest, A, that it might be more transmissible and that it might elude some of the protection of vaccines. 
That's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.